we're going to look at railroad defect detectors. Beginning in the late 70s to early 80s, North American Class 1 railroads started adding radio transmitters with mechanical voices as defect detectors. As the train passed the detectors, the mechanical or pre-recorded voice would sound out the railroad's main on the railroad's main radio channel that a train had passed and note any defects that were found. Most often, after the train passed such equipment detector, the mechanical voice would report the railroad name, mile post or location, a track number if applicable, and on some railroads, such as CSX, they'll list the number of axles on the train that passed, and all this is followed with the phrase, no defects, to indicate no problems were detected on the train. Sometimes the location's ambient temperature and train speeds are also noted by the mechanical voice. When a problem is detected, the mechanical voice will often start with a long, high-pitched alarm tone followed by a description of the problem and the axle position within the train where the problem occurred. Crews can use their touch tone hand radios to get the detector to repeat error messages. Defect detectors are equipped with such a mechanical voice are often called talking detectors by railroad crews and rail fans. And a lot of rail fans will use these uh, detectors along with mainline signaling to be able to keep up with where the train's at. Now we'll safely get in a position where we can use zoom and look at some of the parts. For detecting dragging equipment, a cone-shaped column sits across the whole width of the railroad. You see it there. Attached to a switch, anything dragging from a train will hit the cone, thus pushing it back and breaking the contact. Then it returns to its normal position to prepare for anything else that might be dragging under the train. The detector will register the action of the flag it has a defect. Brittle bars are still used elsewhere, but still have to be repaired over time. Dragging equipment detector Metal flaps need to be replaced because of extensive damage from stuff hitting them. For hot boxes or hot bearings, two infrared eyes sit on each side of the track. You see them there. Staring up at the train's bearings, they register the radiation from every journal that passes over it. If a bearing reaches the maximum temperature for safe travel, the detector will flag and count it as a defect. Some defect detectors will have a white pad on either side of the inside rail. This defect detector does not. Most of these features are used on main lines that uh, see a lot of double stack trains. And what those white pads do is detect weight from one side of the car to the other. And this helps to detect if that top stack on double stack or top container has come loose and shifted, it will pick that up in weight from one side to the other, one side will weigh more than the other. Now, let's listen to a Norfolk and Southern defect detector. Nine, nine, dot, zero, no defects. Norfolk Southern. All defect detectors are attached to a cooled building and there's a fan on the back that I need to keep all the electronics cool. So that is a look at railroad defect detectors. Like I said before, this is not all encompassing and I'm not trying to cover everything. So leave comments and please no bad ones.